Grit Gang. Adventure and mischief on the Mississippi. It was a quiet, moonlit night when Tom and I decided it was perfect for an adventure. We didn't want anyone to hear us, so we tiptoed like shadows amongst the tall trees at the edge of the widow's garden. The branches loomed overhead and we ducked our heads to avoid them. Suddenly, as we were sneaking past the kitchen, I stumbled over a thick root sticking out of the ground and accidentally made a noise. Fearing we were caught, we quickly crouched down in the dark, barely breathing, hoping no one had heard. From our hiding spot, we could see Jim, who worked for Miss Watson, sitting by the open kitchen door. A dim light from inside the kitchen cast shadows on his face as he listened for any sounds. After what felt like forever, Jim stood up, stretching and peering into the darkness. He called out softly, Who's there? But only silence answered. He walked towards us, and it seemed like he could reach out and touch us. We stayed frozen, not even daring to breathe. The night air was filled with the sounds of crickets, and my skin began to prickle and itch from the tension and the dewy grass. First my ankle itched, then my ear, and soon my entire back. I wanted to scratch so badly but knew I had to stay still. Finally, Jim shrugged and went back to his spot by the door. He started to snore softly after a few minutes, and we seized our chance. We crawled away as quietly as we could on our hands and knees. When we were a safe distance away, Tom whispered mischievously that he wanted to play a prank on Jim by tying him to a tree. I objected, fearing it might wake him up. Ignoring my protests, Tom sneaked back to the kitchen to steal some candles. While he was inside, I kept watch, my heart racing. When Tom came back, he had three candles and left some coins on the kitchen table to pay for them, which was his way of making it right. We didn't linger long after that. We moved swiftly but quietly up the hill behind Miss Watson's houses, Tom carrying his stolen candles. At the top of the hill, Tom decided to have a bit of fun by rearranging Jim's hat to make it look like witches had taken him on a magical journey. According to Jim later, the witches had enchanted him and carried him around the state, a story that he grew quite fond of telling. Inspired by his tales and our own mischief, Tom gathered all the boys he could find and declared the formation of a new gang, Tom Sawyer's Gang, which he said would be the greatest band of robbers along the Mississippi River. Everyone was excited and agreed to join. Tom, with a flair for drama, read out an oath he had written, which everyone had to swear by. The oath was fierce, binding us to secrecy with dire consequences for betrayal. We all agreed thinking it more a game than reality. Our plans were grand robberies and adventures straight out of the storybooks we adored. With our imaginations running wild under the starlit sky, we felt invincible. The night grew deeper and our plans more daring. We discussed whom we would rob and how we would become the most feared gang in the region. Everyone had a role, and as the night turned to the early hours of the morning, we finally disbanded each sneaking back home, thrilled with our secret pack. As I crept back into my room, dirty and tired but exhilarated, I knew I had become part of something thrilling. As I drifted off to sleep, 